number is here, Wrestling Observer Alive. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Very happy to be joined, after 10 months now, by Colt Cabana. Colt, how you doing today? I'm good. 10 months. We had our little Observer baby, didn't we? We did have our little Observer baby. And you now, Colt, are having a new baby. I guess Wrestling Anonymous is your uh, new baby. And uh, you're actually you're actually gifting your old baby to the world. Is that right? Yes, I've gi- I've given birth I've given birth to <laughs> Wrestling Anonymous and I've put up for adoption the art of wrestling. I it's something I've oh. done. Uh, yes, I've started a new podcast called Wrestling Anonymous where I take uh, voice memos, essentially Google voice memos from the fans, and they tell me their stories, all different stories. It's been so fun so far. I've been running for about five weeks, and the cool thing is, is like I get them, I edit them, I I post produce them, I put it all together, and essentially, I don't know if I'm necessarily the host, but I'm the curator of these amazing calls, and the calls of their calls are from all over, but they're fun for the most part. You know, there, there was uh, a, a guy who uh, Haku basically took his one-year-old child and started stretching him. Um, there, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, he, he started, like, moving him around and stretching him like a little baby, and he was like, one day you're going to train with me, little kid. And the, and the guy was just like, I don't know what's going on. It's Haku. He could do whatever oh, he Oh, stretching him like when you wake up in the morning and you stretch? Yes, I thought you were talking about like, what yes, Stu yes. was doing to, yeah. to folks. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Uh, and then there's just calls. Uh, there was one call who, who uh, a wrestling fan watched someone die in the stands. Um, that was wild. A call the other, Jesus. Called the other week, you know, talked about their experiences being there with Owen Hart when Owen Hart passed away in Kansas City. And uh, they're all over the place. And it's really fun. It's really fun to do so far. Well, you know what we've got here, Colt Cabana? I have inside sources in the wrestling business, as you may or may not know. And I have been given a clip of one of your shows. Do, would you like to hear it? Uh, please, of course. Well, let's check my it out. My grandfather, my father, now me, got into wrestling got Colt in the early it, 80s. And now my kids, I have kids, and my son likes watching it with me. And My dad always told me the story of my grandfather, when my grandfather would go to a local arena and um, he tells this story about my grandfather and my grandfather's friend. They burned Freddie Blassie's car. And according to my dad, <laughs> I guess there's a Freddie Blassie documentary where he talks about that specifically happening in Southern California. And to this day, if you ask my grandpa that, who's like in his mid nineties, he'll, um, he'll laugh. And then he'll say, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> like, like he murdered somebody, you know, anyways, you know what's funny, Colt? I got I to gotta say this here about that clip and what you were talking about earlier. So uh, it's kind of a weird segue, but earlier we were talking about Del Wilkes who passed away. And he did these interviews talking about how he took 150 pain pills. And I was talking about how if a normal person hears this, they just it's impossible to them. But if you know any wrestlers, uh, there may be a slight exaggeration, but like these guys, they took hundreds of pain pills a day. And your call that you just had right there... That's one of those deals where when you hear stories from wrestlers, you hear, oh, in my day, we had so much heat, uh, this guy burned my car. And you're like, eh, you know, maybe these fans were man slights of tires, but, uh, I mean, come on, you didn't burn a car. Then you find out that, in fact, this stuff actually happened, and this guy was uh, an accomplice to car burning here. (laughs) Yeah, I like this call because we always hear from the people. We hear from Bobby Heenan who, you know, got shot or Roddy Piper who got stabbed. But we never hear the people who do the stabbing or do the shooting or throw the rocks or the quarters in Puerto Rico. Um, So it was interesting to hear it from their perspective. That's why I like this call and I put it on the show. How did you come up with this idea? Because obviously fans love to hear these stories about wrestlers, especially behind the scenes stuff that goes on and travel stories and things like that. How did you decide to flip the script and actually hear from some of these fans that are are quite unique and have lived uh, several lives inside of one, some of them? Yeah, for years, for years, you know, fans wanted to be on my Art of Wrestling podcast, and the Art of Wrestling was just – me in the locker room talking to different wrestlers. And I feel that people were so 
uh, they, they got so into the show that they felt that their stories needed to be heard also. And it's just something I wasn't allowed. I just wasn't what my show was at the time. And it's something that I've always wanted to do is give the wrestling fan a platform. And then there's so many other inspirations, uh, whether it's a, a podcast called Love and Radio, which had a hotline show, um, whether it's uh, beautiful stories from anonymous people from my friend Chris Gethard, uh, whether it's call-in shows just like this with, with Brian and Mike. You know, like I've always loved the call-in show, the idea of it. And there's so many other things, but it's something that I've I've wanted to get back into the weekly podcast game. And it took me a while. The Art of Wrestling took a lot out of me. I did it for you know almost 10 years. There's almost 500 episodes. And this is something new and fresh. And I'm ready to jump back in it. And I'm having such a great time. And so are the fans. It's really cool. Well, have you? You know, had Colin any... Show is a is a great idea, but then there's always uh, there's execution. So what you have done is actually wise because yes. you can basically go through and listen to everything first. And I would presume that if someone has a great story, but they like you know babble on for 19 minutes, you can yes. chop the thing up right and make <laughs> yes. it. Yes, yes, wise man. But- Yes, which I right, it's the perfect thing, and it's something that I that helps the the show flow. It's you know, it's only a thirty minute podcast, so, uh, but if the callers talked on like they do sometimes, it would be an hour and thirty minutes. So we've 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 trimmed it down a little bit. How how cathartic have you found this for some of those fans that maybe you did have to do a little bit of editing at the end, but you listen to this whole thing and it's like, wow, this person really needed to get this off their chest or really wanted to to give this back and, and really reveal how much wrestling has affected them or impacted them or how much it helped them at some point in their lives. How much has this been really helpful and you've been uh, able to play, a, I guess, kind of a, a shadow psychologist or sociologist here? Yeah, now I'm becoming the Dr. Phil of professional wrestling. That's my new thing. <laughs> um, it has. And there's been some great calls so far. There, you know, I, I, There's one I haven't played. There's a couple I haven't played. There was like a 38-year-old mom who's like, I didn't know what wrestling was. And now it's something that we bond over. And I'm taking my child to, a- to see AEW when we come to St. Louis. And there was one that I just got the other day about a friend who wasn't sure about wrestling, who was a trans, uh, a trans woman. And they didn't think they had a place to go to wrestling. And then they were introduced to AEW and where you see trans and non-binary and and wrestlers like Sonny and Nyla and that that's opened the doors and they feel comfortable going to wrestling. They just got wrestling tickets uh, for AEW and they're super excited. So these are calls that I love. I love those passionate calls. I love playing those calls that pull on the heartstrings. But then I also, you know, love playing a call where a guy saw New Jack try to piggyback two women and then they both fell on this on the sidewalk uh you know it's, it's a big range you know it's funny because i'm not gonna lie when you first said that this podcast is gonna be all stories from fans and i'm just gonna be the curator i was like what but i thought about it and uh you know dave and i do q and a's in association with events a lot and and we meet listeners and readers And when I thought about it, it was like, this actually does happen to Dave and I all the time. Like, you'll you'll meet some listener, and they'll go, I got to tell you this story. And they tell you this story, and it's like, that's an awesome story. So the more that I think about it, and then we played the clip, of course, and then, you know, you had a couple of teases here as well. This actually sounds, because... You know, fans, they they have stories. I mean, they absolutely have stories. And I think that that would be a, it's, it's actually a great idea for a podcast. Thank you. Everybody has a story. They really do. And I, luckily yes. enough, you know, wrestling for over 20 years now with my podcast, The Art of Wrestling, which is now free back on the podcast feed. And then being, you know, now at this point with AEW on a national stage, you know, I have a bigger platform. And so I'm allowing my platform for people's stories to, to jump on my platform. So I know it's 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 hard to start a podcast and people start it and they get 20 listeners and they just quit. So and people have great stories. But so I'm happy to do this for people and to give a platform for their stories. Hey, you talked about being wrestling's Dr. Phil. We saw a little of that on Wednesday. You were the man, and I was happy to see, of all the people in the Dark Order, you were the one to really step up and first put that first bug in Hangman Page's head. Uh, you know, your role on on Dynamite has been to play a little bit of the background. What's it What's it been like for Cole Cabana as a member of the Dark Order? We usually see you more on, on Dark and Elevation, but uh, how is it with the Dark Order right now, and how has this moved back to Wednesdays? Uh, obviously... A lot of fans came back and were able to see the show live this week. The numbers certainly looked good. How is life in AEW for Cole Cabana? 
I'm really enjoying AEW. I'm so excited to get back on the road. That's one of the most important part, I think, for the sanity of everybody. Uh, everything's been great in Jacksonville, and I do want to take a note. I think Chris Harrington just tweeted out this list of all the wrestlers that rest got to wrestle in AEW during the Jacksonville run. And, you know, shout out to everyone who's got a contract and is making money that, that Tony Khan and AEW is allowed to make a living. But there's also a huge shout out, at, you know, in my heart, the true DIY warrior that I am of all the independent wrestlers that Tony Khan gave an opportunity to help financially and, you know, um, professionally make a little name for themselves. We've seen people now on AEW Dark who can now go to the independents and maybe not, you know, charge more than $20 and maybe make a little money. And so that's something that I don't know if a lot of people are talking about. I hope they are. As for me, uh, yeah, I got, I kind of got to be the dad. And I think that's my role as I'm in my early 40s, moving on in my wrestling career, is I'm, I'm almost the dad of pro wrestling, the dad of the Dark Order. And I'm happy to give Hangman Page some advice. I think he needs to go and face Kenny Omega. Those are just two of the best. And a lot of people, a lot of people talk in the locker room of just how great Hangman is. And he is, you know, the what this isn't even Dark Order, not Dark Order. It's Hangman Page is the future of wrestling. And hopefully he's the, the future champion of AEW who can wave the flag for our company. We got AEW tickets on sale for Chicago, and yeah. there's a lot of stuff going on that weekend. And I'm going to be there. Vinny's going to be there. Maybe we'll see if we can get Mike there. But this is going to be the first show that I have gone to in well over 18 months. And I was always very positive that like this was going to end at some point and things would largely get back to normal. But at the same time, it's hard to believe that we're actually – that's happening so i guess tell us a little bit about about i mean you particularly chicago what this means to you to be able to do this weekend and uh and yeah everybody tickets are on sale so go grab them now yeah awtix.com is where you can grab those tickets and we're doing shows wednesday friday and sunday in chicago yeah. dynamite on wednesday rampage on friday and the pay-per-view on sunday at the now center used to be the Sears Center in Hoffman Estates. And there's going to be activities, I, I believe. I don't know if they've announced anything, but there's definitely going to be activities all weekend long. I'm sure there's some kind of fan thing going on. I know before the pay-per-view, I'm doing a barbecue cookout with Pro Wrestling Tees that's officially uh, with AEW. I believe I'm going to do a live podcast. A barbecue, you there. say? A barbecue, yes. You yes. interested? You may have a special guest at the barbecue. Of course. Of course. I'm going to do a live podcast. You should jump on it, Brian. An invite. You. Look at that. An yeah. invite right there. Um, yeah, and we're coming to Chicago. I'm excited. I'm, you know, I, like Mike said, I'm kind of a background figure for the Dark Order, but I, I'm 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 gonna pull all the strings I can to get a match in Chicago. I, I can. I, I'm assuming it'll happen some way, somehow, and uh, I can't wait to perform in front of my backyard, my friends, my family, and my community. And while you're driving into Chicago, you're gonna see me on billboards. All over. I've been on billboards in Chicago for 10 years now with one hour tees and pro wrestling tees. So it's going to be an exciting time. But it's not just Chicago. We're going to North Carolina. We're going to Texas. We're going all over. AEWTix.com. Grab some tickets. See some live wrestling. Colt, in this case, I have no inside information, but I feel that I can confidently state <laughs> that you will be getting a match at some point over this weekend in Chicago. Uh, well, I'll let you, Colt, uh, tell yeah. everybody about the archives. Yeah, you know, like legends, Johnny Satan, Mark Rocco, my friends who have passed away, Roland Alexander, who you are familiar with, Bison Smith, mm -hmm. Willie, you know, old ones like William Regal over, you know, since June of 2010. And I, I just I know they were behind a wall and a Patreon. They're still behind Patreon if you want them ad free. And I have my Patreon with bonus calls for Wrestling Anonymous. That's Patreon, Cole Cabana. But I do, for those who don't want to have the Patreon, I just want them to live on the Internet forever uh, like Terry Funk would say, forever. And uh, just go to my podcast feed, The Art of Wrestling, and just download them and listen to them all. Uh, they're all there. It's a rich history. It's the story of my 30s from, you know, not knowing what I was going to do to becoming this podcasting um, entrepreneur and wrestling entrepreneur. And you get to hear my story along the way with 
hundreds, hundreds of wrestlers, many of who go on to become stars in AEW and WWE. You know, here you, we hear Eddie Kingston when he was, you know, down, broke, and ready to quit wrestling. And now here he is, huge yep. star. So The Art of Wrestling, they're all available for free in my other podcast, Wrestling Anonymous. And then, of course, Chicago. Tickets go on sale July 9th, AEWTix.com. And you can watch us every single Wednesday night now, officially. No, no more Saturdays for the most part. Every single Wednesday night on TNT, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central. Yep, check it out, everybody. Colt Cabana everywhere. Twitch.tv slash Colt Cabana. Colt Cabana on Twitter. Patreon, Colt Cabana. And as noted, we'll have him back here uh, a couple of months from now and talk a lot about everything. And Colt, I want to thank you so much for doing the show here today. Always fun. And thanks, everybody, for listening. Twitch homies, everybody at WrestlingObserver.com, Sports Byline USA. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer. Going on, Vinny. Look who's in studio here today. It's me. We're doing a retro 2005 show here today. This mic that I'm using right now oh, no. is the same microphone that I used for IATA. I am wearing glasses because when the show started in 2005, I was wearing glasses and not contact lenses. Livid. Steaming mad. Got the guitar behind me right here because uh, I hit you with the guitar in that picture we were looking at. I enjoyed it because I got to eat more hamburgers. Beep. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.